Kia ora and welcome to this Curator's Virtual Art Tour. My name is Marcus Small and together with Alan Smith we curated Building Structures Plus Plus, a select look at the career of Paul Cullen for the Dunedin Public Art Gallery. I'd like to draw attention to the first work that Paul did in his professional career in 1975. Its significance lies in what we can learn from it, how aspects of his career's work are located in his experimental practice at its very beginnings. The exhibition was held at the end of his final year in sculpture and it's stalled at the Centre Gallery Christchurch Art Centre. He titled it Of Possibilities and Probabilities. By using simple engineering technologies, Cullen suspended natural materials at acute gravitational fulcrum points to articulate hidden energies embodied in the balanced play of opposing forces. An important feature to highlight is that these works were not presented as singular and discrete sculptures. Instead, Cullen provided with them an ecology in the gallery, likening them as a continuum of energy. Each was linked to each other and crucially, as we can see in the image, to the other elements in the room. Photographs show how this potential energy in the individual works becomes like a continuum with each construction played off the architectural details of the centre gallery. To extend the works into their immediate architectural surrounds. There are no gaps in the physical world, wrote Paul Cullen in 1975. It may be perceived as a continuum, a continuum analysable as a series of connected energy states. When Paul Cullen began his studies in 1972 at the Island School of Fine Arts at Canterbury University, he brought with him an understanding of the laboratory. This proves very important and significant. It was informed from his experience gaining his Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences at Auckland University with a specialist interest in molecular biology. He had also spent part of a year studying landscape design at Lincoln University. These two seemingly divergent fields meant that when he entered art school, Cullen was already primed to think of the art studio as a site of and for experiments and experimentation. His prior learning would assist a speculative approach to art at difference to sculpture's formalist traditions. These influences were critical to his development as a prolific drawer. This show features an entire wall of various examples of selected from throughout his career. Cullen was interested in systemic organisation and ordering by human activity, which led him to search for those interfaces between his structures, environs, and a social organisation. Part of the artist's motivation was to build off the range of pre-existing structures wherever he cited his work. And his drawings make visual a concern for how scientific laws, especially physical laws, govern the material world. In certain respects, the kooky diagrams of the 1970s hold a genesis for later developments in which his concerns with a pataphysics as an imagined science, is demonstrative of a sceptical view of empiric reason. All the sketches, notes, complete works on papers, model diagrams, they all demonstrate examples of Cullen's penchant for making art a process of experimental hypothesis, works in temporary completeness and as provisional arrangement. The genesis for this show was a partial reconstruction made by me in 2018 for the engine room of Massey University. This was based on the 1979 show Building Structures that Paul Cullen did for the Barry Lett Galleries in Auckland. Here is an image of the main floor area of the Barry Lett Gallery in 1979. On it you'll see a range of balsa wood structures all spread across the floor and two appearing on the wall. There were around another 15 structures placed throughout the gallery, in nooks and crannies, attached to the ceiling even, trusses linked up against the wall, 
or protruded from them. Paul called this show building structures. In returning to the partial reconstruction we can see at the Dunedin Art Gallery, a section of carpet has been cut to fit the gallery space. This carpet is quite an authentic chocolate brown with a fleck running through it, a Cavalier Bremworth stock matching the 1970s original. And on it, we've placed a different orientation of reconstructions of the original structures made by Paul in 1979. One of the appeals to me when researching at the Paul Cullen Archive was the discovery of a letter written soon after the show had ended by the critic and writer Winston Kurnow. He addressed it and sent it to the artist. The letter contained a number of notes that Kurnow had made when he visited the show and spent time with it. He wrote a few lines that provide first-hand experience of the show to appreciate what is an accumulative investigation of those structures throughout the Barry Lett galleries. Kurnow's notes also reveal perceptive insight into orientating viewing the built miniature forms that are based on structures in the world. In his notes, Kurnow pondered where these structures might lead the viewer and he understood how reading the works was necessarily undertaken through accumulating and looking at each one. He proves that the spectator became implicated in a process of reading the works. And he wrote, quote, ordinarily ways of looking into and out from architecture. Skylights let light in. Here they let light out. We look down on what is ordinarily over one's heads. We are inhabitants of sky space. Kurnow's experience of both the relative size and scale and accessibility of the structures led him to contemplate what was their simultaneous effect. He writes, quote, we inhabit a human-made world. These structures are designed to push us, to reground our making in a rediscovered sense of our human being. For this show, we decided to install one of Paul Cullen's major works, Model Standard from 2010. This is a reworking of its original conception in 1999. It was first conceived and installed at the Island School of Fine Arts Gallery, and here is a photograph of it spliced in. Paul's orchestration of sculptural parts and a display of equilibrium had been influenced by a CNZ-sponsored research trip to North America that he made in 1997. This is one of the work of a series of a body of works that he produced on his return to New Zealand. What we are seeing here, or needing to perceive, is the view of a table from above, upon a floor that has been turned upright and stood on its end. The model reorientates a view of the world. We are still occupants of sky space looking down, if we recall Kurnow's comments on the model structures from 1979. The floor, turned upright, is held in place by the other components in the work. Two props, encyclopedias, a bucket of concrete, a desk one might sit and write or draw at. It seems to ask us to question the very logic behind empirical reason and it has links to measurements. And these are seen in a smaller gallery. It's the final room in the show, Building Structures Plus Plus.